Good morning, and thank you for being here today. My name is Barbara Collins, and I'm President and CEO of Humber River Hospital. And I'm pleased to welcome to the hospital today the Honourable Christine Elliott, Minister of Health and Deputy Premier, the Honourable Jill Dunlop, who's Minister of Colleges and Universities, and the Honourable Pramit Sakari, who is President of the Treasury Board. Welcome to all of you. We are here today in the setting of our command centre. You might see uh, many of the tiles behind me. The command centre is unique in Canada, allowing for the monitoring of patient flow, delays in care and early identification of patient deterioration, which ensures timely intervention and it's demonstrated much better outcomes and safer care for patients. So I want to thank each of you for your contributions and your commitment to our province. At Humber River Hospital, we appreciate the important work you are doing to prioritize health care and to support the next generation of health care workers. <laughs> Over the past two years, we've seen firsthand the importance of strengthening our health system and how vital it is that we recognize and support and train frontline health care workers in essential services they provide. At Humber River Hospital, we've accommodated over 900 students each year as they contribute as our contribution to training the next generation of health care workers. Health human resources shortages affect all of us and have become more acute as a result of the pandemic. I have overwhelming admiration and thankfulness not only for the Humber staff, physicians, nurses and volunteers, but all healthcare workers, all frontline workers who have made significant sacrifices to support each other and to care for our patients. It's been an immensely difficult and demanding time and the ongoing efforts of all frontline workers has been tremendous. I also want to personally thank and recognize Minister Christine Elliott for her leadership in advocating for the health of Ontarians throughout your career and especially during the pandemic. Thank you for showing commitment in the midst of an unprecedented circumstances and your unwavering compassion for healthcare workers is appreciated. We recognize your understanding of the equity issues in many communities across Ontario, just as they are in Northwest Toronto and the impact it has on our community. On behalf of the Humber River Hospital team, please accept our gratitude for your remarkable service and instrumental role in helping lead our province and in guiding health care over 12 years as an MPP and almost four as the Minister of Health and the Deputy Premier. We wish you all the best in this next chapter of your life. And with that, I will now ask you to come up and speak. Thank you, Minister Elliott. Well, thank you very much, Barb, for your very kind introduction. And uh, good morning, everyone. It is wonderful to be here today. And to begin, I want to thank the team at Humber River Hospital for welcoming us, first of all today, and for providing exceptional care to patients, especially over what you've seen for the last two years. We know Ontarians have sacrificed a lot over the last two years to keep our communities safe. From missed celebrations to time with loved ones, the pandemic has been difficult on everyone. Thank you for doing your part to get us to where we are today. I also want to extend our deepest thanks to Ontario's healthcare workers for their extraordinary dedication and efforts. Providing care to patients and throughout Ontario was no small task over the pandemic, especially when previous governments left our province unprepared. Working together, we quickly mobilized to face COVID-19. Our government made historic investments to protect our communities and to strengthen our health care system. This includes $5.1 billion invested in hospitals since the start of the pandemic. We've added over 3,100 beds so that patients can get the care they need. Over 23 million PCR tests have been completed and over 135 million rapid antigen tests have been distributed to businesses as well as to the general public. Team Ontario has administered over 32 million doses of the COVID-19 vaccine and over 86% of eligible Ontarians are now fully vaccinated. All of that hard work has led us to where we are today, a place where our province can safely manage COVID-19 for the long term. Looking back, the most important lesson we've learned is that we cannot allow ourselves to be unprepared again. We need to build a stronger, more resilient healthcare system that Ontarians can rely on now as well as into the future. And I now want to welcome Minister Sarkaria to share how our government plans to do just that. Thank you.
Good morning, everyone, and uh, thank you very much, uh, Minister Elliott. Uh, it's great to be here joining you with Minister Elliott, Minister Dunlop, Barb Collins, and I today. And it's also wonderful to be back here at uh, Humber River. Ontario's hospitals have been the first line of defense in the province's battle against COVID-19. I can't think of a more fitting venue for today's announcements. The past two years have been unlike anything the people of Ontario have ever experienced. Far too many have seen significant impacts to their jobs, their businesses, their life, uh, lifestyles, and tragically, their loved ones. We have all made tremendous sacrifices to protect one another. And across this province, people have made tireless sacrifices and demonstrated the Ontario spirit that saw us through the worst days of the COVID-19 pandemic. The same Ontario spirit that will see us to a brighter and more prosperous future. But to build a stronger Ontario, we must learn from the past. Early on in the fight against COVID-19, one thing became clear. After decades of mismanagement and ignored warning calls, the province's healthcare system was not ready for such a massive shock. From battling hallway health care, to not having enough doctors and nurses to care for our loved ones, to discovering stockpiles of PPE were expired, leaving us no choice but to use and rely on other jurisdictions for supply. Across every metric, there were significant and long-standing gaps in Ontario's health care and pre pandemic preparedness. Gaps that should have never been allowed to leave so many vulnerable for so long. But I'm proud <clears throat> that our government has made considerable progress towards closing these long-standing gaps. Since day one, under the leadership of Premier Ford, your government has moved swiftly and boldly to address the long-standing problems plaguing our health care system, to better protect the health and safety of Ontarians. And as Premier Ford, has said time and time again, we have not spared a penny when it comes to protecting Ontarians and the jobs that meet so much to hardworking families across this province. Our investments include 31 new, uh, new hospital, 3,100 new hospital beds over the past two years, hospital beds which we will be making permanent. This investment is the equivalent of six new large community hospitals in Ontario bringing total investments in hospitals to well over $5.1 billion since the start of the pandemic. We have provided long-term care homes with over $1.6 billion since March 2020 to help protect residents and caregivers, and $342 million to strengthen our nurse and PSW workforce. We have made so much progress in the fight against COVID-19, and we have learned so much. But the job is not done. That is why we are building on our progress today to ensure that the province will be transparent and accountable and whatever arises tomorrow. With that, I am proud to introduce further steps through our plan to stay open. Ontario is the first province to introduce a comprehensive post-COVID-19 pandemic preparedness plan. If passed, this legislation will ensure that Ontario is well equipped to fight any future pandemic or threat to the lives and livelihoods of Ontarians. Our plan features three key pillars that will help us maintain momentum for the future. First, we are expanding Ontario's healthcare workforce. We are doing this by adding 295 postgraduate positions and 160 undergraduate seats to train the next generation of doctors and healthcare professionals across Ontario over the next 10 years. We are creating new financial grant programs for the healthcare sectors and reducing registration barriers for foreign credentialed medical professionals so they can apply their skills here when it's needed most. Second, we are shoring up the domestic production for critical supplies. This includes positioning the province with the capacity to manufacture PPE and innovative healthcare products right here in Ontario, and invigorating our supply chains to secure the goods needed to keep Canadians and Ontarians safe and healthy at all times. Third, we are building more hospitals and hospital beds. We will achieve this by moving forward 
on our landmark capital funding commitments of over $22 billion, with more than 50 major projects that will add 3,000 new beds over the next 10 years. Our plan to stay open is how the people will hold us accountable. It is how we will support our frontline healthcare heroes, and is how we will give Ontarians the confidence and security of knowing that when a future pandemic emerges, Ontario will be prepared. Together, we will turn the page on this chapter of our province's history. We will build an Ontario that remains, remains vigilant and ready and meets the challenges of tomorrow, all while staying open. Thank you, and I would now like to introduce Minister Dunlop. Good morning, everyone, and it's great to see so many nursing students with us today. You are the future of healthcare in this province. Thank you to my colleague, Minister Sakaria, for outlining the first part of our announcement today. The COVID-19 pandemic has demonstrated how vital healthcare professionals are to the health and long-term care of people in Ontario. Removing unnecessary administrative bar barriers to healthcare professionals will go a long way to addressing health human resource challenges in Ontario. And investing in the Community Commitment Program for Nurses will help to expand the healthcare workforce in communities where the need is greatest. But these initiatives are only some of the steps the government is taking to strengthen the supply of healthcare professionals, particularly in underserved communities. As we address the gaps in our healthcare system, we recognize that these gaps are more prominent in remote and rural areas of our province. That is why, as part of our plan to stay open, our government is pleased to introduce the new Ontario Learn and Stay grant. This new program addresses the pressing needs for qualified professionals in communities across the province. The grant will provide financial supports to post-secondary students who enroll in high-priority programs such as health human resources and other critical care positions and commit to work in underserved communities when they graduate. Through the grant, eligible students will receive full funding for tuition, books, and other direct educational resources. While the initial areas of our focus of the grant are likely to include programs that train students in healthcare professions, other fields and disciplines may be added in future years to address emerging labour needs. If the past year has taught us anything, it's that through innovation and flexibility, we can improve the way we educate, and train our workforce. And ensuring our healthcare professionals have the hands-on experience they need to hit the ground running will help them make an immediate impact in hospitals, long-term care homes, and other facilities after they graduate. Currently, our government provides about $20 million in clinical education grant funding to publicly assisted colleges and universities each year to help learners translate their knowledge of theories and principles into actual practical settings. But we need to do more. That is why going, going forward, we will be investing an additional 41.4. Currently, our government provides about $20 million in clinical education grant funding to publicly assisted colleges and universities each year to help learners translate their knowledge of theories and principles into actual practical settings. But we need to do more. That is why, going forward, we will be investing an additional $41.4 million annually through the Clinical Education Grant to support the clinical education component of nursing education programs. Our increased investment in nursing clinical education will allow publicly assisted colleges and universities to expand laboratory capacity supports and increase supports for hands-on learning for students. Nursing students will be able to receive high-quality, work-integrated learning opportunities as part of their studies to prepare and train for employment in the field of healthcare. I've seen firsthand that Ontario's post-secondary graduates are incredibly creative, adaptive, and compassionate. As we continue to prioritize a strong healthcare workforce in the years ahead, the support graduates will provide across Ontario including in underserved communities, will be critical. It doesn't matter where a person lives in this province. Ontarians 
should have access to the high quality health care they need and deserve. And our government is taking action to ensure that they get it. Thank you. the mic over here. Okay, that concludes our event. Thank you, everybody.